Okay, good morning everybody. Let's see if I can stabilize that a little bit. Yay! <laughs> this is on here and I am out in a beautiful river area. This is uh, one of the areas that always reminded Jesse of um, Orly and how they met uh, because she was doing prayer work on the creeks. And yes, I'm swatting mosquitoes still out here. It's been a bad, bad season for those. And so anyways, in this time, it's really an amazing, it's an amazing opportunity time. And I say that because coming into July and for this month's video and this month's upcoming energy of July, we have a lot to do with victim patterns, especially at the beginning of the month. And I, I wanted to talk about some components that are related to that, that I've noticed a lot of people facing, having to deal with, having to work with, um, shifting of circumstances, and remembering the fact that we are in a point where we have second chances right now. And that is really, really powerful for us. So in this beautiful setting, I've got this creek running, I've got the water running around me. I'm sitting right in the middle where the water goes around on both sides. I've got this historic bridge right here behind me. It's called the Sunday River area, which is really big for our community out here and a lot of weddings perform. Matter of fact, I tried to come out and shoot last night and I couldn't because there was a wedding party out here actually rehearsing for a wedding that's probably going on today or tomorrow. So um, anyways, I wanted to get out here today and get this done first thing in the morning and to share with you some thoughts that have come up for me. And, and it's very interesting because I was working around this concept about pain and there's been so many people that have been dealing with different types of pain and I thought, wow, I wonder how that fits in with what's happening with the codes right now. And of course, when I looked at the month of July and new moon energy and things like that and all the magnifications of the, the lies and the deception and um, these aspects of the victim energy coming through and I thought to myself, wow, this is, this is what it's about because so much of our pain stimulates or, or originates from these points of trauma, what I, I call POT, points of trauma. <laughs> and my friends like to laugh about that because, you know, pot has become such a big thing. And I said, yeah, it's just, it's, it's all about pot these days, <laughs> which is our points of trauma. And so when we look at these points of trauma, what happens is they can create different types of pain in our life. And of course, that sent me down a great code rabbit hole, right? <laughs> of unfolding and looking at, you know, what are these these different points of pain? What are what are these aspects of of pain and and what are they about for us? So, I thought, wow, and then when I started looking into the codes for the month, I thought this is really going to fit in well. This is really amazing how this all comes together here. So, pain in and of itself is really about opportunity. It's really about paying attention. It is a deep, deep call from ourself to clear and to release and to, more than that, really transform. And I think that that's, that's a really incre incredible piece. And yes, I have my notes here because <laughs> I, I wanted to remember everything and I want to remember all the right components here for what I'm talking about. And so, in this aspect of pain, pain comes about to stimulate our inner alchemist. It comes about for us to speak up and to voice on something. It comes up to make us pay attention, really, and to realize that we have a powerful opportunity to transform something that is happening in our life. And pain is kind of that indicator where things can go any direction. You know, they could get better, they could get worse. But how we handle the pain, how we deal with the pain, that is what is going to make the difference in the direction things go and what that pain means or what that pain represents for us. So when we get down to it, there's three core areas of pain and that's gonna be our mental, our emotional, and our physical pain. And some people might be thinking, well, where's the spiritual piece? <laughs> and the spiritual piece actually comes as a secondary layer, so I'll talk about that in a minute. 
But in these three core types of pain that we experience, and this happens in our life experiences and our human experiences, and in that process of these different types of pains coming in, again, they're, they're coming out of points of trauma usually, somewhere where something has happened in our life that didn't go the way we wanted it to go. It came about where we thought it was one thing and it turned out to be another thing. So you can see how those deception pieces are starting to play in. Our trauma originates oftentimes from things taking a direction that feels hurtful, that feels out of alignment. And, and it's true oftentimes where things have gotten out of alignment and we've jumped more into the human experience than we have the soulful experience. We've stepped away from our divine connection, we've stepped away from the God connection, or we've stepped away from our soul connection, our own self connection in that process. So when we break down these different pieces and we look, at, for example, first at the mental aspect. And the mental aspect can be very black and white in a sense. It's actually much more soulfully based than most people give it credit for because most people credit the logical mind with the human self. But when we look at mental just in and of itself, it's really soulful. It's really the soul piece of things. But when we look at what mental pain is, mental pain is a breakdown of relationship. It's a breakdown of uh, or distortion of what true relationship or true partnership is about. So oftentimes mental pain is what arises through our relationships with other people, whether that is work relationships or family relationships or um, personal relationships. It could be any of these things. It, it just comes from being in struggle or having trauma around relationships. And oftentimes these pieces, we can start with one piece, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical, and a lot of people actually start in the mental pain pattern because it becomes programmed from their early childhood and then it progresses on through different points of their life where more and more experiences come in. And as we know, the power of the mind is really powerful. So if that mental pain or that mental point of trauma happens early in our life, which it does for most people, then it starts to cascade into the emotional and the physical experiences as well. Because we haven't developed some of those other pieces quite as strongly um, earlier on in life. They, uh, we have more attachments, more investment, if you want to say that, as we age. So then when we move on to the emotional pain piece. Now the emotional pain piece is really where we start to tap into an aspect of where we thought something was very, very soulful. We thought that something was part of a soul process. We thought that we were listening to our intuition or our soul self. And the experience that we're having does not feel aligned with that. Um, so it develops this pain piece. And we don't get creative in the moment. We let it fester, we let it stew. We're not addressing pieces of it. We are um, resisting the truth of what's in the situation instead of embracing it and transforming it and tapping into that alchemist and creating a different outcome, um, vocalizing it, speaking up for ourselves. Oftentimes we, we may not do that. And the emotional pain is really interesting because the emotional pain is very tapped into um, self-worth patterns. It's very tapped into where we restrict our own freedom. It's very tapped into where we um, lock ourselves into situations that close off our freedom, that close off our sense of movement in the world. And when this happens, this actually creates a, can create a stagnant energy. And of course, as we know, where there is really stagnant energy, there's, there's a difference between stillness and stagnant. <laughs> and stillness allows energy to gather, whereas stagnant energy, um, and I'm just, I'm just gathering some information here, stagnant energy actually blocks flow. So there are actually two different components in there, and we don't oftentimes differentiate that. Um, the stagnant energy 
then will affect things like our health or our finances. And this is where we start to see things that creep up. So oftentimes um, when we start experiencing pain, like some of those things which we attribute to a physical, it might actually be an emotional pain. If our health is being involved, sometimes it might be actually that um, emotional pain that's going on for us instead of the physical. And it will start to notice things like um, where, where we have emotional pain locked in, um, finances become blocked. We might start having health issues show up. It could be depending on the type of emotion, what the emotion is connected to, uh, that might manifest in the joints. Or because it's very stagnant energy, oftentimes it will affect things like our kidneys or our liver, our um, sources that allow us to detoxify. And it will also attack things like the nerve or the brain, which uh, has a tremendous amount of power to um, keep us connected with self-worth and to speak our own voice and to be who we are. So lots of different pieces there. And then we get into the physical pain. And the physical pain really starts to stimulate from our rebellion energy patterns. So physical pain really is coming up and showing us that this is an area where, where we have some sore points, where maybe we have some old triggers going on, where we are going into fight mode, where we are going into confrontation and competition, and where we've crossed the line from standing up for something that we believe in and operating in purpose to full-on rebellion or full-on um, activist mode. And that then inhibits our ability to have a favorable future. So when we end up with physical pain, in our life, we are dealing with trauma that had to do with repression in our life. It had to do with um, pieces of <clears throat> being very, very controlled, very controlled environments and aspects of uh, very controlling people in our life. And so then it starts to stimulate or to manifest as physical pain. And when we start to see physical pain manifesting, it oftentimes can be more around things like our joints. This is where we see more cancer issues coming up. This is where we see uh, more pieces that are happening in our body parts, our mobility parts, our legs, uh, our ability to support ourselves in our legs, our ability <clears throat> in our arms, losing strength in our body. Um, these types of things are connected more to the physical pain and the physical traumas uh, that we've had. So it's not necessarily um, abuse always, because abuse could fall under, say, like the mental patterns, or it can fall under the emotional patterns, probably more than the physical patterns. But it, it yields more to where we didn't maybe stand in our power, and now it's overcompensating. So the physical pain triggers these rebellion patterns in us where we start resisting things and and what it does is the physical pain then like i said manifest in these joint issues and different things that inhibit our mobility and then thus in turn make us dependent upon people and this becomes very unfavorable for our future because inevitably we're all going to leave the human body right we're all going to have that point where we exit, the body's going to age, it's going to give out, we're going to need a new vehicle or whatever. But in that meantime, that quality of life becomes different. So as we choose to clear these different pains in our life, we are needing to pay attention to them so that we can transform some of these core energy patterns that's at the end of it. And it's really interesting, when I started to do this work, <laughs> and I started thinking on these topics, I went into my astral travels during my dream state last night, and of course, what came up but this one piece, I was on this journey where this, I was going through all these different settings and I was able to clear everything and all the energy was clear in this, every area of my life, all these different points of my life, except for this one piece <laughs> that Jesse had been through that was locked in the brain. So the brain was telling me, hey, you haven't cleared this piece yet uh, in this process. And what it was was really uh, 
had to do with this old relationship that she was in and out of for like 10 years and you know the heartstrings never got attached and that's where I got into some of these deeper layers for the pain that deal with the spiritual and um, soul pieces of it and so you know inevitably I'm like oh my gosh do we have to go through these patterns again and I said that's it today's video is going to clear these pains that's done we're done we're over with with this um, and and these are the things that really lock in so I want to bring up then this aspect of what happens when we have those experiences that end up triggering for us physical mental and emotional pain all together in our life then what we're dealing with is we're dealing with those pieces that that then affect our self-worth they affect our abundance they affect our money flow in life they affect our ability to be success it leads us down roads and patterns that we work and we work and we work and we put all this effort for forward and we are not receiving for those efforts it's just work and it's hard work and it's laborious work and it's like you know it's it's like slave work almost because you're just slaving away and you're under these very controlling influences remember all these different combatants you're under controlling relationship influences that are tearing down your body your mind your um, your resources and it's leaving you with nothing so you're working 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 and you have nothing left you have nothing to show for it no enjoyment no time to take out for it and this is where a lot of things happen so when we have those points of trauma those experiences in our life that actually connect and hit a pain that is in all three of these areas together this is where the bigger patterns unfold and in one hand they're secondary patterns to these core patterns but in another pattern that's where the bigger patterns fold and these connect directly into our soul lessons because what happens here is when all three of these join together and they all we get pain in all three of them from an experience or point of trauma then it creates what we call a soul pain and this is an interesting dichotomy because on one hand we say well the soul has no pain because the soul's already evolved and the soul doesn't experience that that's a human experience but what happens is it creates a point where it disconnects the soul from its own wisdom and it puts us more in the human existence than the soul existence at that point so the soul pain comes from the disconnect from our own wisdom from the God energy from the divine presence it comes from a disconnect of allowing a situation to teach us and to learn from it and so this is this is the true soul pain the true soul pain is is the disconnect from itself and its wisdom and so there is a soul pain even though the soul is understanding the soul pain again is originating from that disconnect so when we disconnect from the wisdom piece we are also disconnecting from the abundance and it's a vicious cycle when we disconnect from the abundance we're disconnecting from the wisdom and vice versa so they're they're very interrelated and I think this is why people place such a huge emphasis on the abundance piece in life and why but it's oftentimes mistaken for material abundance like money as opposed to just simply pure raw abundance energy which then has the ability to manifest the other pieces now another piece that manifests out of all of this and it really manifests connected to um, again to to all three of these coming together is the is the material piece the material pain and I look at this as a separate pain from the physical because the physical really is more of of a body thing it really is more of um, of a limiting factor a restricted mobility and the financial is a very specific piece to it because it's an earthly piece just like the soul is the soul piece and the financial is the earthly piece of it 
it's kind of the yin yang, <laughs> if you want to say that, to the soul piece. And so when we have financial pain going on in our life, and this is, again, it's very specifically related to money. Uh, it is a pain that is originating because we have blocked out money, because we had trauma around money in our life. Um, again, there was something that was a point of trauma for us that hit all three, physical, mental, and emotional, creating a very powerful experience. And these powerful experiences then affect either the soul or the financial, and sometimes both. You know, sometimes both of them together when we put this together. And that then creates huge turbulence, which just sends us into a pattern of, of again, this rebellion, this, you know, going to different extremes from the other extreme, if you were impressed, going to be an outright, you know, freedom activist or whatever, um, rebelling against everything that repressed you. So financial pain comes out of money being misused in our life. And maybe we weren't taught about how to use money appropriately. Maybe our soul was we were living more in our soul self in many ways and we weren't paying attention to the material aspects. Um, we weren't paying attention to those financial aspects that were going on. We didn't understand them completely. Um, and, and a lot of souls deal with this. A lot of evolved souls, a lot of aware and conscious souls on our planet deal with this financial pain. Uh, it can come out of being around people of influencer who had money who then misused it or use their money or their power or their influence to control us in some way. So this piece becomes a really important piece for us to be aware of and to, to unfold in all of this. Um, I wanted to bring about these different dynamics because they all in many ways interrelate and they all cascade because you might get the mental pain that connects with the emotional pain and then that puts us in a, in a position of oftentimes challenged in group situations. If you have a mental pain and a physical pain going on together, it puts us in a situ situation that maybe shuts us off from people who operate with unconditional love. So there's always conditions and attachments on things. If you have a combination of the mental pain and um, what do I want to say, the mental and the um, physical pain going on, uh, it's very connected to lessons that we need to learn. It puts us in a stuck energy pattern. So kind of realizing some of these different patterns, if you're in that stuck energy pattern, you've got that maybe combination of mental and physical going on. If you're in the, um, you know, always having conditions in your relationships, not having the unconditional love piece in your life, then you've got maybe a combination of the mental and the emotional going on. Um, if you've got this piece of, you know, so there's these different components, really, there's these different components that are going on in things. If you've got a combination of, um, you know, the mental, emotional, again, you're, you're, you're shut out of groups. So it's important to realize when these dynamics are going on, let's go back and let's take a look at these pieces and let's say, where am I feeling this pain? Where's this pain originating from? And, and let's get that cleared. So some really powerful pieces. I'm hoping that this has been useful for you today. And I want to do a little meditation out here because I'm not sure that there will be extra videos being caught. And I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the most beautiful butterfly. <laughs> There's there's July's energy coming in, new moon energy. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, you know, easy to distract by simple, beautiful things. So <laughs> um, I've got two things with me today that I'm going to work with. And I called on one of them actually before I started this video because I wanted to do a little connection with Orly and Jesse. And, and um, this came about when Jesse first was working with the compassion work when she put out her first book, the Act Activating Compassion and uh, it's a little heart chime and it's something that she always connected with it's something that was around for her um, in relieving some of the stresses and clearing pain 
and of course we know the heart is unconditional love so that's going to be really good for clearing some of the patterns and we also um, know that the chime energy is um, is really about the material world and what tries to destroy us or separate us from spirit so when we combine the two of these we really have been able to operate responsibly through the soul self in the material world in a way that the material world doesn't destroy us but we operate more in harmonious relationship where we're operating free from the influences of others so great little piece here and then I've also brought out today my singing bell so I'll be working with that today and the bell energy is really cool it is an energy that amidst all the storms and the challenges in life and um, it helps us to hold our power now of course we need to remember our pure power and not the misuse of power so again I think that plays very well into the pain energy and um, is going to really help with clearing that the bell energy is also going to be very valuable because I'm sorry I've got mosquitoes city out here the bell is also going to be very powerful because of the aspect of, of the physical world um, turbulence that we have coming through in July that can be uh, really showing disruption in Mother Earth, Mother Earth reclaiming herself, um, uh, some of the storms, literal storms in life and not just the metaphysical ones that come through, through pain for us. Now, um, when we look at that as a singing bell, um, we actually are bringing in success through the soul self for us in this energy and we are um, bringing in the wisdom of the soul so we're calling in the wisdom of the soul to be the alchemist to transform the pain in our life so if you'll all just kind of gather with me listen into this it's great because the, the, the river isn't overpowering my voice today. <laughs> Listen into that and let's go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths and we'll start with the heart energy. And let's just breathe in for a minute. Let's create a little space for ourselves, a little healing space. And then let's go ahead and let's open up to remembering those pains that are the ones that we just seem to don't let go of. They keep coming back up over and over and over again. Those ones that probably have affected us physically, mentally, emotionally. They're hitting the soul areas of our life. They're hitting the oh, they're hitting the material. They're hitting the financial pieces of our life. And as you start to tune into those pieces, I want you to take a minute to tune into standing your power, being aware, being conscious in those places. And I want you to be able to speak your voice in that pain. I want you to stand up from your soul self and stop the pain right then and there, right at that point of origin, that point of genesis. And be in stillness with that for just a minute. Be in stillness with that. As you see how that feels and watch that pain disappear watch the dissolution because you're now realizing that when you hold your own self in that pain and you hang on to that pain you also lock the other people into those patterns that they've been in that created the pain so by releasing your pain you change their patterns and allow them the opportunity 
to make a shift or transition unattached to whether they do but allowing it to happen freeing them from this cycle and freeing yourself And now tune in and own that power you're standing in. Smile. Be glad to not be a part of that pain anymore. See the pain dissipating away from you. Dissipating from your body, your mind, your heart. Reconnecting fully with your soul self. seeing it fly away. No judgment, no right, no wrong. It has benefit for somebody else, but not for you. And now, allow yourself to start receiving Start receiving the unconditional love. Start receiving the abundance. Start receiving the recognition for your efforts. Start receiving for all the work you've been putting in. And because you haven't received in so long that receiving has built up interest, and you're receiving in more blessings than you were originally due. See yourself interacting favorably with others, being a leader and a catalyst for integrating different pieces, maybe not literally, but being able to bring together people in favorable ways. bringing together the soul, connecting in with true purpose, and realizing that it's okay, the soul self can provide for us, and then balancing, balancing the freedom, the soul self, integrating these pieces, let them all go into that big Hot of alchemy. And realizing that as we integrate these different pieces, each and every one of them, they create powerful blessings, powerful unfolding through wisdom, through soul connection through being who we truly are, abundant and alive and real. And take a deep breath into that. And as you breathe into that, and let your breathing restore, let yourself come back out. Feel the clarity in your cells. Feel the clarity in your mind and in your heart and in your physical body. Tune into how amazing it feels to release that pain to be free from it, to have mobility again. I want to thank you all for listening in. Feel free to stay in the space if you'd like to stay into it. Work with it. Take some calming time for yourself after this because there may need to be some processing time. But these are powerful times of transformation and we have to speak up for ourselves, not in rebellion, not in war, not in protest, 
but in alignment. And I think that that's the powerful peace and the powerful space. And I hope you'll continue to stay on this code journey with me because the code journey is so unique for each and every one of us. And it's such a powerful connecting and learning experience. It's such a powerful way for us to stay connected with the divine and God and ourselves and to not forget who we truly are when we're in this existence. And that's the way we get through these existences. Um, I'm going to be deeply emerged <laughs> in my own responsibilities of creating the 2020 version over the next couple of months. Um, but I'm going to continue to come at you. And don't forget, we've got study sessions, which are absolutely free to attend. If you'd like to attend those, um, we usually I usually have those going on around the new moon and the full moon. You can always check in with me on that. And just love to you all. I hope you maneuver this upcoming month with great wisdom because there are great blessings to come out of it. And particularly the couple of weeks going into July is going to be very, very powerful. And it's going to be a time of magnified energy. So your choices and how you choose to handle things right now are going to have a bigger impact than normal for you. So we stand to gain a lot if we're willing to face what's happening and not resist and to be in the spaces of acceptance and recognition and releasing and all of the pieces I've been talking about today. Take care, everybody. See you next month.